Uh, hey, good morning, Mark. Uh, welcome to Morning Minutes, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark hey, Berger and Mark Novak. And this morning, we're going to be talking about the, well, we call it the evolution of the household where we were in 1970s, which Mark can talk firsthand about. Uh, <laughs> and um, then probably where we were been heading the last five years, especially say 2019, what yep. buyers wanted from homes, uh, the briefs they were always giving us and probably their most important topics and more aspects and parts of the house. And now after this, where we feel in 2021. Mark, do you want to go through a bit of the mindset when looking for a home in 1970. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> viewers out there, uh, what know, was back important? in the Cromer High School, Cromer High School of uh, Sydney, where it all happened. Yes. Um, oh no, but look, honestly, Michael, I, I just think I, 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 and it's been going through, I think everyone's heads hundreds of times, just how life with COVID-19 has changed the household has gone back to old fashioned ways. It really, really has. Like it's, um, and I know, uh, you know, a reference the other day, I heard that all of the old fashioned businesses are surviving. So if you look at all the businesses around that are, that are essential, that are doing well, you know, the corner stores, the petrol stations, the, the grocery stores, they're all the old, the stores that were around in 1970. So it's interesting, but taking that, 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 ethos or thinking back to our homes and looking at our homes now they've changed like what was important to me last year in my home is different to what um, this year in my home and again it's gone back to old-fashioned values it really yeah. really has so you know your kitchen wasn't wasn't revving up was was actually idling slower and slower and slower now kitchen the kitchen is going full steam ahead. ahead yeah, yeah. Kitchens, the demand for kitchens and dining rooms had just gotten smaller and smaller as years go past, as a lot of people were eating out, Deliveroo, yep. and yep. going out to, to restaurants and just, it, it wasn't like it was in 1970s where it was, that was almost like the centre centerpiece of the home. It, it was, was used the centerpiece. Regularly. The oven, you know, our oven in the last 10 years has progressively been used less and less for yeah. the majority of our households. The stove progressively less and less. The microwave more and more. We go to um, homes which are a couple of years old and they've never used the oven. Like, yeah, there's <laughs> that's crazy. Like for sales, for rental, everything. There's homes where the it's like, hey, Dita, good to have you on. Um, where people aren't even using the oven. Like it has dramatically changed. Um, having that extra room in a house or it was almost like um, you wanted it a bit bigger than you needed, if you could as well. The backyards got smaller and smaller. Uh, more bathrooms grew in homes. So the yeah. expectation of a house to have an ensuite um, for for, uh, for mum and dad, you know, that, that expectation was never present in 1970. Um, so homes have dramatic, over 50 years, uh, living, homes have changed so much. But my point, which what I was talking with you this morning about, Michael, was a lot of, a lot, if not all of those values or principles of a good home, that's all come back. Yeah. You know, the backyard, you know, where I can't go out, I can't lay in the sun in a park at the moment. So suddenly I go home to lay in the sun. But, but it's actually, I think what it could be doing, and I could be wrong, is it, it's actually training people to. Um, admire, respect, learn, learn how, how to cook, learn how to use their homes um, like they used to. Yeah. And, and, the, but there's also like a big generation who like, there's obviously the people who still remember and they've, they probably look back on how did we get to where we were in 2019 with just how, um, not like values changed, values and wants changed, but there is a huge demo, uh, a huge, uh, pop, like population of people say under 30 who have never experienced the other way. But you, you see the old photos, you see the stories of what a home used to do, but you just didn't see that in trends from buyers. But I think now you're gonna, you're gonna start to see that come through. Um, and, and we're celebrating our house, like we, um, 
because because you know I've got a 21 year old, a 14 year old, um, Lisa dog in the house. It's almost like you know you're almost like really thankful um, mm. more than ever. Even though you're locked, you know, even though you're locked up in the place, you think you'd resent it. It's not like that at all. You know, we're looking around going. You know, thank God. You know, the the uh, how good this dishwasher been, and how good. You know, like you. I don't know. You just you're just looking at the our homes differently now. I can't help to think that that's not temporary. I can't help to think that what we're going through um, and what we're enduring at the moment is not going to be remembered for the rest of our lives and the rest of our kid li- kids' lives. And I yeah. think that's going to change. And that and that's the take out here today going, we're seeing where it was in 1970s, how far we sort of went down a different path up until 2019. And now moving forward, look at how, what we feel buyers are going to want, tenants are going to want. So I think the main point of it is to be looking at what you're buying, either for your home or if it's an investment, what add-ons do they have? It's not that we will expect another COVID-19 crisis, but as you said, Mark, I, I believe the values and what people are, are appreciating they have or they wish they had right now will be in the back of people's minds for many years to come and will for a life, affect for a lifetime. For a lifetime, for a lifetime. And will affect the decisions when making prop- when making property choices where it goes, nah, the backyard is too like not enough natural light. Where are we going to get an outdoor area? Like all these things were not spoken about pre-COVID-19 no. will be c- considered. And you want you to be what? in front of that curve. If you've got an investment property, if you're doing renovation, if you're buying right now, that's the takeout for today. Don't think 2019 buyer. Think 1970 buyer. Yeah. It, the, yeah. It, it's and and if you want and yeah if you know, work out what was important in 1970 because most of the time that's what's important today with our new our new world but um I, I, to understand to further understand what what I'm what we're saying is I, I I genuinely think what we're going through at the moment is not far off war I wouldn't know war and I won't pretend to know war but you know, whether it's a chemical war, whether it's a biological war, or whether it's a, a, a an arms war with weapons, um, I can't help to think that what what our world is going through at the moment economically um, and also going through, um, uh, you know, with, the, with the virus and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, it just... Yes, I do. I, I, I don't think- know what war feels like, and, and but I'm, yeah. I'm thinking... Uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of an idea um, because the challenges seem to be very consistent. So if this is, if this is as close to we get, and if this is how it feels with a biological war, then um, and this is the residue that comes out of it because I'm very conscious of the residue that came out of world war two. My, I had a very old dad and my dad um, uh, always talked about the war and, he lost his, uh, a lot of his family. He lost his father. He was the eldest of, um, of six kids. And, uh, and dad would always remind me, um, you know, with, of, of war, 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 war and, and stories. And they were always stories of appreciation. They were yeah. never stories of, 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 of fighting <laughs> or, or anger. Or were, it was how it made violence. how it changed their views. Yeah. 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 So my point is, if this is if this is our, if this is the new age style, you know, it's not a nuclear bomb. It's not it's not an arms uh, an arms war. Uh, it's biological potentially uh, with uh, no face, no enemy, uh, but a virus. Yeah, um, and, and then- that's probably the hardest thing, at least with the because if you look at a war and what it does. So we're very fortunate. It's not a physical war, and we're being well for us, like the, the medical. The medical people on the front line feel it's physical. They're, they're probably working 12, 18 hour days. But for yes. us, it's not like we're not being called to serve. We're being called to stay home. Like you got to think during that period, the, if you're not on the front lines, it's probably very similar where businesses are closed. You're being told to stay Panic. home, seek shelter. Yeah. Uh, the economy yeah. stopped. Like you're right. It's that, that sort of new age, new version of it but that byproduct is still very same stay home your That's business point. is closed That's maybe, point. yeah 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 and i and i think that coming out of this 
um, I can, I can, I, I just can't help but to think I'm going to be using this for a lot of my life with my grandkids and with my kids saying, and that is why this is important. You know, it is important you buy a house because, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's, you never know what happens. It is important you leave a little buddy, bit of money on the side because uh, it's important you have dunny paper, food in the fridge, uh, essentials because, uh, and that's exactly what my dad did. Uh, that was and, a whole and, generation, second generation. Yeah. Move either immigrated from Australia with nothing and the importance of saving a little bit away and also yep. went, went to war, they've realized losing everything. So that whole mindset probably lasted two generations and probably correct at my generation that's gone. Like my correct. generation, unless it's gone. And this could be that trigger to have that back. Like for yep. a lot of people 30 and under saving 20, like saving some of your wage for a rainy day. That's just, you don't think of it. You don't do it. You don't care. You don't, you, even though you know your parents and your grandparents said that, but that was triggered by their experience with the war and for the children directly under who saw it, uh, this is our version of that going, well, do I really want to be week to week if I can't work? And remember how this made you feel now, how helpless remember. or just exposed. So that saying, save away for a little rainy day, save away. And tying that back to our topic today of homes changing in 1970 and 19 and 2020, again, I just think it's just, it's completely remodeled our homes. So I, I think that the importance of what our homes have done um, uh, are going to go back to some good old fashioned stuff and topics that what our homes used to do and the way our homes worked and circulated, we are definitely, we're not going to go back exactly like that. We've progressed a lot in 50 years, but the core principles of what that like, allow me to give you an example. Uh, the, one of the biggest uh, Amazon sellers uh, was uh, that's number one at the moment was 350 uh, three months ago, a puzzle maker. Mm. So the US, US Amazon, these guys had a business that was pretty good. They were 350 on Amazon just in terms of distribution ranking. Now they're number one on Amazon in terms of distribution ranking. Puzzles were around in 1970. Yeah, that's my point. So you know, it's like, hang on a second. And you know what? Is the puzzle going to die straight away as soon as we come out of the blocks? No, nah. I reckon I'm going to be picking that puzzle again up in six or twelve or three or one month with my kids and saying that was cool back then. Let's do it again. And I think yeah. your home is going to be doing that as well. Some good old-fashioned principles in your homes. Uh, the way your home runs and circulates, I think you're gonna, we're going to go. We're going to we're going to allow ourselves to go back to the old-fashioned days and let our home do the old-fashioned things it used to do, i.e., a dinner party. Yeah, hundred percent. And then there will be, I think, a lot of things like we touched on with technology and use, um, where we had all this technology but we weren't really implementing it. Like people still traveling heavily into state when you had Zoom. Um, and I think there will be, I reckon there's going to be a good balance of technology being used and efficiency, efficiency v laziness, which we touched on a couple of days ago, and also with home values. I think there's going to be, I don't see it going back to 1970s, but I think we're going to be closer to the 1970s thinking than we are of 2019. I think you've said it many times, we will be a better race after this. And I, I think they're the, probably the two key areas technology laziness and house values that's for sure and the home will also just to just to stick on to the back of that the home will also um be a fully functioning office for kids and parents yeah. um kids for their education uh for remote learning we are now we have now done a huge crash course for children in remote learning and we yes. have now done a huge crash course for uh, keep for workers that can um, uh, remote work uh, and educated them as well. So there's, there's, I can tell you the amount of people that could not use Zoom and could now use Zoom uh, in the last in the last eight weeks has been bloody huge. They're going to take those principles into the future. My point is, again, the house is not going to be like it was. 
It's going to go back to, to um, good old fashioned principles, but it's also going to go back to a home office. You know what? We're going to be using our homes more yeah. for everything. Well, it's the same thing. Like look at school kids. If you had a day off and you were sick, you missed a day of a day of learning. There's no yeah. reason why they can't be cameras Spot in the classroom. On. That's a big one. Yeah. And now the kid may be sick in bed, may not be able to interact to the highest level, but at least she's in class. Obviously, the class don't need to see her, but she's well, still there's in no, class. There's no reason why, you know, the class can't be up on, on the television in the lounge and the kid be under the blanket in the lounge just watching the class for the day, you know, rather than watching Disney Channel, they're just watching what's happening in class. Don't need to comment, don't need to work, but that's what's happening in class. That's a big one. That's, That's a big one. So, like, and that principle and that mindset after what's happened now will will carry on. Like the the force at first for the force from home learning. Why can't that keep running in some sort of sector? And that and that will work. And that obviously translate to all other industries. That was just an example of how it could work for schools moving forward. But I can't help to be excited that the house is going to go back to some good old fashioned principles. I yeah. honestly love it. Like I think. You know, I've looked. You know, the the um, being isolation and 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 um, you know, you, you know, the, our, our our my daughter's not going to work. Uh, my 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 do- my other daughter's not going not going to school. Uh, and we're we're spending a, we're, um, some some a lot of time in the house. I can't say I don't like it. I actually, mm. I mean, I, I'm I'm sort of into it. It's pretty cool. Uh, last night we had a we had a big family dinner. Uh, where would where would, it was a bit weird though, but where was we'd normally have my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, their family. So there's eight, there's eight or nine of us normally around table, and we did it on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, pretty weird, um, but okay, we're not going to do it on Zoom in the future. But I can say when the next eight of us are around a table, it's an it's a even more special an occasion than the last time eight of us were around the table. Yeah. Um, because we appreciate the ability to be around the table together. Yeah. Again, uh, we're not looking forward to doing it in a restaurant. We're looking forward to having it around the table as a family. So, you know, again, we're going back to that old, that old fashioned meal around the table. It's true. At home. At home. Beautiful. Anything else you want to add on that, Mark, or that's, that's a wrap for this morning? Uh, that's it. Oh, look, there's a big announcement that came through. Just on why were you? Is your Greg Jemison talk today at twelve or tomorrow? It is. So commercial yeah. tenants and commercial landlords. We were sent real estate agents, industry. We yeah. were sent a memorandum around of the new policies in place around commercial tenancies, commercial landlords. I could not understand it. Mm. I'm not an idiot, and I read it ten times. I read it with my head property managers, they could not understand it. So then I naturally you ring up the professionals. Uh, we've, I'm fortunate um, to, to have um, uh, as a good friend and also a consultant, the best property lawyer in the country, Greg Jemison. Uh, Greg, can you explain this to me? He explained it to me. I said, why would the government put out some sort of like video or YouTube or yeah. Why can't they explain this better? And I said, listen, are you, is it okay for you to come on at 12 o'clock today and just explain that to all my, to, um, to all my landlords and, and, and um, tribe that we you know on, on social media? He said, mate, absolutely. And I put it up on social media. It's gone bananas, the amount of the attendance, that have, the amount of people that are supporting it and going to be watching it. So that's on at 12 today. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm excited to tune in for that as that applies quite heavily to what I do. Everyone does so, and and being a live event, you can ask questions. That's the great yeah. thing. So you can interject, interject and say, "Hey, what about this? What about that?" You got yeah. the best lawyer in town that you don't have to pay for. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Value. I shared it, so it should be good. It's going to be good. Now, one other thing. Uh, last night, five o'clock, the Real Estate Institute president announced that there will be no moratorium on rents that there will be rent relief announced shortly as in days from the prime minister. The piece that I took away was the moratorium on rents. What is a moratorium on rents? A moratorium is to say to tenants, you don't have to pay rent because if that happened to our industry, we would have been 
as a real estate industry, absolutely stuffed, yeah, stuffed. And if that happened to our landlords, equally stuffed. And the economy, have- money stopped. That's the worst money thing. Money stops, money like, stops, you know. And it didn't make sense money, because all the money was coming in. People are still got jobs, you know, job saver. All the money was coming in. Why should you stop rents? Yeah. So the REI president said last night, that for the and very influential lady, every trust every word that comes out of her Leanne mouth. Or something I, on your is that a name? Leanne is, Pilkington is her Leanne. name. She said there will be no rent moratorium. She's heard it from the government, from the ministers themselves, um, and uh, she's she she can come out and say that. And there's more information flowing. Great news for the industry. Great news for landlords. Good news for tenants because she's also confirmed rental relief and there's going to be modelling around that. Okay, beautiful. All righty, guys. So 12 o'clock, tune in. I've shared the event. You can see it on Facebook, but 12 o'clock, tune in here. I'm sure you'll cross-post it on any of the all the Novak Agency uh, channels. So if you know anyone, it'll be on. But thank you, everyone. Tune in. Xander, buddy, good to see you. All righty, guys. Thank you. See you. Have a great day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bye.